500 years before the birth of Jesus Christ, the prophet Zechariah wrote in Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. He says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. As Jesus rode into Jerusalem, he knew that this was his final week on earth. As he rode triumphantly, those people who were there who witnessed Jesus' coming into Jerusalem brought to mind the words of the prophet, Isaac, prophet Zechariah, who says, Rejoice because your king is coming. They were excited, they were jubilant because they believed that Jesus was now coming to establish his kingdom. His disciples also, who were standing there, believed that at any moment Jesus was going to announce his kingship. He would throw off the Roman yoke of bondage and become their king. And so there was great excitement. The Bible tells us that the inhabitants of Jerusalem took palm branches as they waved as Jesus rode in. Some of them took their outer garments, their coats off, and laid them on the ground because the king was coming. And they shouted in excitement and exultation, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna in the highest. You know, the human heart is unpredictable. The Bible says the human heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? As Jesus rode into Jerusalem, those who were there were excited because they believed their king was coming. But just a few days after this triumphant riding into Jerusalem, they, these very same people would be shouting, We have no king but Caesar. These very same people who were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. These very same people will be saying, crucify him, crucify him. That's how fickle the human heart is. That's how wicked the human heart is. So as Jesus rides into Jerusalem, there were mixed feelings that Jesus must have been experiencing. Yes, the Israelites were rejoicing because the king is coming, but at the same time, Jesus knew that this was his final week. I guess his mind must have gone back to some 18 years before. You know the story. When Jesus was only 12 years old, his father and his mother, together with the rest of the families, made their way to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. Now, it's interesting to note that Jesus had a very difficult upbringing. His older brothers and sisters were not always very pleasant to him. Perhaps it's because they knew that he was a 
special child born in a unique and a very special way. And sometimes, you know how children are, they would tease him and they would ridicule him. So it was difficult for Jesus as a child growing up among his stepbrothers and sisters. And that day came when Mary and Joseph decided to take this 12-year-old son of theirs to Jerusalem. Bands of people could be seen coming from different villages, everyone making their way to Jerusalem because they were going to celebrate the Passover feast, a feast that spanned some seven days. There was excitement as they all made their way to Jerusalem. And when they got to Jerusalem, Jesus was particularly um, careful to observe the priests in their priestly robes. He watched as the priests carried out their duties and their functions. He watched as he saw the different furniture items there in the courtyard. He saw the lever where the priests would wash their feet and their hands before entering into the temple to minister. He saw the large altar where sacrifices were offered. He saw the people as they gathered all the lambs, the goats, and other animals that were to be sacrificed. The historian Josephus tells us that there were hundreds of animals that were brought to be sacrificed. Jesus watched with keen interest as the priests would offer the sacrifice on this great altar, as the smoke consumed the sacrifice, it was there that the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus and illumined his mind. It was there that Jesus recognized and understood his purpose or his mission on this earth. He had come to be the savior of this world. He would be the true lamb of God. These animals that were being sacrificed typified or foreshadowed his coming when he himself will lay down his life for the sins of the entire human race. And so, with this in mind, Jesus understood the purpose of his mission. Fast forward 18 years now, as he is riding into Jerusalem, he reflects on what took place when he watched these animals being sacrificed. He, Jesus understood that the moment that the priest will offer the lamb as a sacrifice, he himself would have to lay down his life. Can you imagine? If you knew that your final week on earth, you were just entering. Can you imagine the people that Jesus had come to save they were bickering and fighting among themselves. Can you imagine? After spending three and a half years with his disciples, who were his closest companions, none of them fully understood his purpose or his mission. They were expecting him to establish his kingdom, to proclaim himself as king, and they were looking for certain positions in his kingdom. Jesus rides into Jerusalem. He knew that the time of his departure was at hand. He knew that 
during this Passover feast, when it came time for the priest to offer that lamb as a sacrifice, he himself would have to offer his life. I guess this is a solemn and a somber thought for each one of us. But you know something? I, I am encouraged because during that one week that Jesus spent, he was able to spend quality time with his disciples celebrating the Lord's Supper. After celebrating that special feast, Jesus then made his way to the Garden of Gethsemane. It was there in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus agonizes with God in prayer. Can you picture him in your mind's eye? As he asks his disciples to stay up and pray with him, he goes away a little further to pray and agonize with God. He comes back only to find these disciples sleeping. Jesus goes and prays again, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass away from me. Oh, my friends, my salvation and your salvation trembled in the balances as Jesus struggled with God in prayer. Humanly speaking, he didn't want to go through this ordeal. Humanly speaking, Jesus did not want to drink from that cup. And so he prays, Father, if it is possible, if there is any way of saving the human family, let us me not have to go through with this. But if there is no way, then I'm going to submit to your will. Friends, it was the will of God the Father that Jesus goes through with the ordeal because of the love he has for you and the love he has for me. God loves us so much that he was prepared to deny his son's wish. It was God's purpose that you be with him in paradise. And so God says to his son, go through with it, my son, because I want my children to be saved and to be with me. Friends, we are precious in the sight of God. We are precious to God himself. He not only created us, but he has redeemed us. And God was willing for Jesus to die for our sins. And so Jesus has to drink that bitter cup because of your sins and my sins. Jesus goes through with the ordeal. The Bible tells us that he is arrested, he is tortured, he is abused, he is spat upon, he is ill-treated, and finally condemned to die as a common criminal. Picture him as he carries that cruel cross. Picture him as he is nailed to that cruel cross. Picture him as he is hoisted into the air. Picture him as he prays, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus, my friends, dies for your sins and for my sins. Jesus pays the price for our sins. Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But thank God the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus dies for your sins and for my sins. And so during these few days that we are celebrating the Easter, we remember 
that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank God that Jesus was willing and prepared to go through with this ordeal in order to save you and in order to save me. An interesting thought is shared by the Apostle Paul. Paul says, God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, when we were at our worst, when we were enemies of God, when we were waving our fists before the face of God, God demonstrated his love towards us that when we were at our worst, Jesus died for us. And my friends, if Jesus would die for us when we were at our worst, what more now? Now that we have come to accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, do you not think Jesus will forgive us when we sin? Do you not think God will have compassion and mercy upon us when we do wrong? So the word for God, of God today for us is this, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Whatever your sins might be, come to Jesus and receive the forgiveness that God so anxiously and willingly wants to give to you. Come just as you are and God will accept you because when we were at our worst, God demonstrated his love towards us so we can come just as we are. Jesus prayed that prayer whilst hanging on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yes, when Jesus bowed his head and died, we are told that he was brought down from that cross and placed in that tomb. We are told that it was very early on that Easter Sunday morning that the angel was dispatched from heaven. And as the angel descended from heaven, he comes to the place where Jesus is entombed. He cries out with a loud voice and calls for Jesus, Son of God, come forth. Your Father calls you. And with life that Jesus has within himself, life that is underived and unborrowed, life that is original, Jesus emerges from that tomb and proclaims, I am the resurrection and the life. Oh yes, beloved, Jesus rose from the grave that Easter Sunday. Jesus has power over death. Yes, this is the time where we remember the death of Jesus Christ, but it's also a time that we ought to remember that Jesus rose again. And so, my friends, we serve a risen Savior. We thank God that Jesus is alive. He lives, my friends, and he has power to draw us unto himself. He has power to forgive us when we sin. The Bible tells us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, I say to you, my friends, come just as you are. Easter is a time 
for looking into ourselves and remembering that we are sinners. Easter is a time for us to remember that God the Father loves us so much that he was willing for his son to die for our sins. Easter is a time for us to remember that Jesus rose again from the grave. And as he rose again from the grave, let us remember he is coming again soon. How do I know this? Because when Jesus spent those days on earth with his disciples, the Bible tells us that there was a time that over 500 people in an assembly saw and testified of the risen Savior. Yes, my friends, before Jesus ascended into heaven, he stood and conversed with his disciples and they watched as he ascended into heaven. As they looked steadfastly into heaven where Jesus was ascending, the Bible tells us that there were two angels who spoke to them and said, Ye men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who has gone up into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go. Yes, my friends, the angels testified that he is coming again. John in the book of Revelation says, Behold, he is coming in the clouds and every eye shall see him even those who have pierced him. Oh yes, and Jesus himself tells us and makes this promise to us. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you, I Go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. The story of Easter speaks of a crucified Savior. It speaks of a loving Father. It speaks of a risen Savior. And finally, it speaks of a soon coming Savior. And so, my friends, I concur with John in the book of Revelation when he says, Even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. That's the hope that we have as believers. We are looking forward to Jesus' second coming. Yes, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Come and put an end to all the pain, the suffering, the misery, the death. Come quickly and make your appearance known to us. It is my prayer, my friends, that during this Easter season, you would sense the presence of God very close to you, and you will be encouraged to embrace Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. May this be your experience and my experience. In Jesus' name, amen.